We're live. We're live. Yay. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody. Welcome to our latest exhibit. Uh, today, we're going to be doing our virtual tour for Queer y Que. In other words, Queer and What. Um, we're going to be walking you through looking at all the different pieces that we have. We're multicasting to Instagram and Facebook. Woohoo! Sorry, Twitterverse, you didn't work for us. Yeah, we Twitter have complications. Our, we have a pride crew here. Me, JC, Laura's here. Hey! And Patrick, our fearless leader. Hello, everybody. And we're going to be walking you through our show today. Yes. Yeah, well, and we want to do a quick shout out to um, all the amazing artists who participated in this exhibit. Anthony, Luciana, Daniel, Ricky, Jesus, and Juan Carlos himself. Um, and we'll be showing you artwork of all of these folks shortly as we go around. Uh, this first piece is by Daniel Mena. Um, and we absolutely love this piece. We're gonna get it in a little bit closer a little close. so you can see it. All the little details. And this one was actually painted on one of those hardboard canvases. Uh, and so it's actually all hand painted. We have a lot of virtual art in this exhibit that you will see also, but this is one of our paintings. Mm -hmm. And if folks are wondering what it says, it says, Todos son bienvenidos aquí. All are welcome here. We're gonna go up to our next piece. Next piece. Oh wow, who made this? So I, <laughs> this is one of my drawings and this is just essentially me as a little kid being my best queer little baby gay so <laughs> um and those who know me well recognize this post um which i still do this is my what are you talking about post um here as well and it's really important for us to say that this entire exhibit features all latinx queer artists from connecticut so all of our artists are from somewhere in connecticut a lot of them are from new haven county um, but they're all Latinx and they're all queer. And what our exhibit title, which um, Juan Carlos did mention in Spanish, means queer and what? Exclamation point. Yeah, and we really wanted to like embrace what it means to be queer and just be unapologetic about being brown and queer. Um, and then we go on to the now version of me, um, which is just me embracing just who I am. And if you notice, uh, the rainbow sort of uh, evolved as well with the uh, black and brown colors that rainbows uh, have now. And it's it's also like just, again, me coming into that space of being unapologetically brown and queer. Snaps. And by the way, folks are wondering, all of these things, most of these uh, are going to be up for sale. And if you have are you interested in any of these prints? You can email Laura at me at info at newhavenpridecenter.org. Hey. I also do have prints available outside of these. Um, if you go to Etsy, you can find Art Artivism by JC. You can order some of my prints there. And all proceeds of the prints are going to go to the New Haven Pride Center. So these are our next two pieces. There's actually two. Um, and these are both by Jesus, Abraham Morales Sanchez, um, who is on the line right now because we, we, I just saw him send some hearts um, on Facebook. So, hey, Jesus. Hello. Um, but these are his pieces. Uh, and both of these were created in response to um, one of those COVID art exercises that folks were doing on social media where you were creating artwork every day uh, inspired by words or concepts. And so these were two of his pieces. Nice. And I believe, JC, these are going to be for sale, correct? Yes, these are also for sale, $15 um, for the prints. Um, and they're super beautiful. They're so... I love how colorful they are. I know, fun. the colors are really vibrant. Yeah. Personally, I'm a big fan of the kind of unicorn hippopotamus. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Clearly, we thought we were going to do We are out here. <laughs> but, um, yeah, that, that's also It's super pretty adorable, cute. yeah. <laughs> you know. <laughs> All right, well. Mm -hmm. So this is our next piece. This is another painting. Uh, again, this is by uh, Daniel Mena. 
Um, a lot of Daniel's pieces, uh, Daniel is a Latinx trans queer person, and uh, a lot of his pieces have a lot to do with identity. Um, you'll see there's this really incredible piece at the end of the exhibit um, that he did um, that talks a lot about identity and being Latinx. Uh, but I personally really love this idea of being, it's brave to be soft. Um, yeah, I love, I, I just love the contrast because you have these beautiful flowers and sort of like uh, very light colors throughout it all. And then you have this very strong dark blue that just tells you that there is bravery in being soft, which I, I think it creates a really beautiful and interesting contrast um, between the image. Um, and just like, right, we think about this dark blue as being a very like strong and masculine color. So for it to have that beautiful statement, I think it's, I mean, this is honestly one of my, if not my favorite piece in the entire uh, show. I really love it. I do also want to just do a shout out to the fact that you can actually come and see this art in person. So even though the New Haven Pride Center is currently closed to the public, uh, we are doing limited viewings of this exhibit. Uh, you can go to newhavenpridecenter.org and click on the exhibit card that's on the front homepage. And from there, that will take you to a link to make a reservation to come and view it uh, it's completely free to make that reservation. Again, that's newhavenpridecenter.org. And we're back. And we're back to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome back to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> the top piece you might recognize from our show art, uh, this was um, uh, the piece that we put on as our exhibit artwork. Um, again, both of these were inspired by um, Jesus' participation in the 30-day art, COVID art challenge. Um, and one of the things that I personally loved about, I, I actually watched Jesus create these every day, was um, seeing how kind of unapologetically queer and brown that all of the paintings or all of the artwork was. Uh, and you can catch all of these on his social media. So he has 30 of these different pieces. Um, yeah, they're, I love the color contrast, but just FYI, if anybody out there ever wants to propose to me, don't do it with a pineapple. Ah! I want an actual <laughs> ring. <laughs> are you sure about that? Yeah, no, no, I want an actual ring. No, these are really beautiful images and very topical and very on, um, you know, what everybody's experiencing. Well, that's right what I'm now. saying. This one is really, really gorgeous with the um, healthcare worker, you know, literally fighting. And in their scrubs, like, I think this one's just really powerful. Simple, but powerful at the same time. Jesus said he only got to 17. I mean, 17 is still an impressive number. You go, queen. <laughs> <laughs> so next, we're going to move over to um, definitely a center fan favorite. Oh, my God, I love this uh, one. <laughs> Ricky Mestri, um, who you may also know uh, from Bridgeport Pride and as one of the curators of the... Um, what was it, Our, uh, Out Works exhibit this year, formerly known as the Same Sex Art Show. Uh, Ricky, all of his are um, acrylic on canvas, uh, and they're all beautifully painted. I love this piece. I've seen this in his um, studio for uh, a couple different times when I've been to visit, and I've, I've always found this piece to be incredibly powerful. Oh, it's fascinating. Um, for anyone who's not familiar with Ricky's work, his work is often very political and often is um, really kind of putting out there this idea of social commentary of either the queer experience or the brown experience. Um, and I, I think that this idea of kind of being eaten away by cigarette is definitely a queer experience. Mm. Unfortunately. Unfortunately. Wow, this one looks gorgeous. Another piece by Ricky Mestri. Just look at this color in the back. Tell me it doesn't look like it's glowing. Again, a lot of Ricky's work is very political, and I think you can definitely see the political aspect of this. Um, the idea of like all the wounds that we experience as a community um, that we hide underneath our skin and our clothes and kind of this raw emotion moment being silenced yeah i think it also has like a hint of of sort of religious iconography and religious look to it absolutely which i think as uh 
black, uh, brown, black and brown, or specifically talking about the show, like br for brown people, like especially as a Puerto Rican, uh, religion is very present in the island. Um, and like, so that's why I think I really react to this because um, religion, unfortunately, organized religion has often been used as such a weapon towards queer people. Um, so I, I think this is, it's absolutely beautiful. And the next piece sort of does the same thing too. Um, but this is absolutely beautiful because it really shows those wounds in a, in a, in a spectacular way. I mean, it leaves me breathless. I think that's why I'm not saying much about it because it's just so amazing to look at. And if you look at the detailing in this, like the hair and the skin, these little figures in the back and like the fat, oh my goodness. Girl. <laughs> Speaking of religious iconography. <laughs> good segue. Um, this is, a, yet again, another painting by Ricky Mestri. Um, obviously, this is a direct uh, kind of um, commentary, I'm going to use that word, on uh, religion and the way religion, unfortunately, views a lot of queer people. Um, you know, religion for, for so many people in our community is super important. And as JC just mentioned, um, you know, religion is, is the bedrock of a lot of aspects of, of black and brown communities. Um, and, you know, to kind of be shunned from something that maybe have been very important to you for, for something as simple as being queer. Um, yeah. yeah, this one is. Again, look at this texture in the hair. Girl, I wish my hair looked that good. That's all I have to say. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, this is just a window. Yeah, this is our, <laughs> ignore our messy window. office. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we're going to pull out really quick so you can see all three and then we'll get closer. These, all three of these photographs are by Luciana McClure. Many of you may know her uh, from her incredible work with Nasty Women Connecticut, uh, which is an amazing partner of the centers. They're actually partnering with us on our next exhibit, which is Art Against Violence. Um, but these are three photographs um, by Luciana, um, and uh, unofficially, I'm going to give a shout out to Luciana, who's also joining the center's board very soon. <laughs> um, so we can get closer now. I just wanted to give people the, the further perspective. Um, but yeah, this is my favorite. I just, I just love this image so much. I don't know. It just feels like. It's honestly amazing. Yeah, it just feels like just growing back into being a part of nature. It's just, it just feels amazing. And then this is, I love this one a lot too. Look at this. I know. We were all talking about how this one made us feel. Yeah. And then that one. I just feel like I'm a huge believer in like simple is better. And I just love how sort of like simple these images are, you Sim know? Simple yet powerful. And just, you know when you hear a picture is worth a thousand words? Well, I think this is worth like a million. It's just, it's Yeah, these are gorgeous. Amazing. Get right in there. Really see. See it? And then. This is just so... A little self-portrait almost. Yeah. So gorgeous. Luciana, Luciana does a bunch of photography. And this is just a door. <laughs> hey, door. <laughs> I'm going to go into another piece. Uh, this is, an, again, one of my favorite pieces of the show. This is, I think, one of my top five because it's. I just think it's so beautiful. I think this symmetry in it. Um, and this is by Anthony. I just love the bright colors. I love how... Yeah, the asymmetry of it. Uh, someone said, love these photos. Highlights the way that queerness is natural and sacred. Ooh, I love that. Chills. So much. so much. That's amazing. I agree. I agree. Yeah, these really capture a whole other side of queerness, which is... Just like, as, I mean, as I said, while we were putting the art up, this is probably one of my favorite shows we've, we've had. And sadly, it will be semi-in person. Again, you can um, go to our website at newhavenpridecenter.org and you can sign up for, to view it. Four people at a time, so we're still going to be socially distancing and masks are required. 
it's so interesting because after reading that that, hi- that this highlights the 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 photos highlight the the way queerness is not turned sacred now when i look at this image like it looks different it feels like something like some sort of god or something god of queerness <laughs> <laughs> so I, I i just think it's that's a that's a cool thing about art is that every time you look at it you see something new and something more amazing exactly this is also by Anthony. I love this. I'm gonna get in a little bit closer. And again, some of these, if I get really quiet, um, is some of these like are just so beautiful and striking and um, it's really hard to put into words what I feel when I look at some of these as a, as a brown queer person, when I look at some of these I feel really identified and there's pieces of my experience that I'm like, oh yeah, I know exactly what that means, but it's really hard to put into words. Yeah, this one definitely is a standout piece for sure. And I love like the little subtle hints in the background. Ooh, I put my finger in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay, you can show your finger. <laughs> the subtle hints, like the flag and like... It's like a good way of like... Right, right there. there. <laughs> We're getting silly. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> Speaking about getting silly. Hey! <laughs> this is another one of my pieces, and it's really about sort of poking fun. Sorry, Laura, it's a little too high up for you. <laughs> hey. It's, hey. it's about <laughs> poking fun at some of the stereotypes that uh, black and brown, specifically brown men experience in the, in the, in the community, um, you, know, uh, you know, and the struggles that we have with machismo and and being very macho and different things like that. So I kind of wanted to poke fun at it um, <laughs> while also making a statement about being out and proud and unapologetically. Um, and like the title of the show says, Queer y Gay. So like just being very like upfront and proud of being brown and queer. This is also by me. Oh my goodness. <laughs> and this is for me, I think that as we really look at the Black Lives Matter movement, um, there is, there are folks within the Latinx community who identify as Afro-Latinos, who the Black Lives Movement uh, actually also uh, affects, right? And I think that uh, Black queer women are really leading the movement. And if it wasn't for them, you know, we wouldn't have the light. So I wanted to kind of bring forth all of that, right? Like how black women are, are leading the way, how black queer women are leading the way. And that's, I, this is just sort of my love letter in the form, to them in a form of a drawing. And I, I told you this when you first brought it in, but I love how you have all these people in the back. Like, it's just a really powerful image, mm. simple but powerful. And this, this image really kicks off the kind of last part of our exhibit that is very activism focused, yes. which is awesome. And this is the last one by me, I promise. Oh, I wonder who this could be. <laughs> um, and again, for the, uh, in Puerto Rico, there's a lot going on. Um, and a lot of the women that are leading that movement are queer Puerto Rican women. So this is, again, a love letter to, to them and the work that they're doing. And I wanted to, to show them taking the lead and being bold and brave and fighting back. And, and that's really what this is all about. Carly says she loves it. (laughs) This is uh, our final piece by Ricky. um, And this is uh, a super powerful piece. I think, you know, we we just passed the four-year anniversary of the Pulse nightclub shooting, which at the time was the worst uh, gun violence uh, attack in U.S. history. Uh, Since then, it's still in the top two or three. Um, and uh, specifically queer men of color, queer Latino men were targeted by um, the Pulse shooter. Uh, And this was a piece that Ricky created in memory um, and to celebrate those lives. Uh, We we did actually lose a local person in Pulse, uh, for anyone who is not familiar, one of our local DJs uh, from the Springfield area uh, was one of the 49. and so our community, you know, mourned it just as much, but this signified a, a really important moment for, for queer people where, you know, queer spaces are sacred to us and we don't have a lot of them. And to be attacked in one of our sacred spaces was 
very jarring for, for many of us. I can speak personally as someone who works in the club scene. It, it was very jarring and very scary. And um, still to this day, I think there are many of us that are affected by this moment. Um, and yeah, it's just, I think this is an incredibly beautiful and powerful piece. Absolutely. And just a reminder to folks, you can, we, we do have uh, times that you can uh, schedule to come see these in person. Um, and that's by going to newhavenpridecenter.org and click over, click over to the exhibit. And right at the top, it says make a reservation. And it's completely free. Um, we just asked for reservations because we're trying to make sure that we're following guidelines and keeping you and us safe. So this is the last piece by Anthony. Um, and I think we're kind of making that return to one coast, your piece from a few, few back. Yeah. Um, talking about the kind of Afro Latino, Afro Latina, Afro Latin, Latin X experience of the black lives matter movement. Yeah. And the, and the connection, you know, I think, um, what's really beautiful about this piece too is that it's you can see how unapologetic the, you know this being in front of you is just letting you know that black trans lives matter and sort of yeah like uh like lucy lucy just said it looks illuminated it's just just absolutely beautiful it's it looks like it's glowing yeah yeah the individual looks like they're glowing yeah like. it's just it's glorious it is glorious. And the detail, like the colors. I know, just... look at all of this detailing in the face, in the back, like, I'm so obsessed with the face detailing, like all up in here. So and again, gorgeous. I feel like I can usually talk more about art, but these feel so close to things, you know, that I've experienced, that I've lived as, as a brown queer man. Uh, again, the intent of the show is to really highlight uh, brown queer folks, uh, you know, uh, and their experience. So sometimes it's a little bit hard for me to put these things into into words because it's I feel more emotion than anything. But I hope that you are all enjoying them as much as we have been able to. Now we have our final piece. So this piece is by Daniel Mena, um, and the. The piece is incredibly powerful. Um, the words uh, written on the kind of shadowy figure um, are really intense. Um, they directly correlate to the trans experience. And it's essentially all the things that a family member, or specifically a parent or grandparent, might say to someone coming out as trans that are dark and, and maybe not what we want to hear um yeah and folks and i can i can tell folks a little bit um people who don't read spanish um it has things like you know why are you doing this i didn't raise you like this um no one will ever accept you like this wow. god uh made god did not make you like this um you can't stay here if you do that how could you um this is just a face uh, you will always be my daughter. Um, I, know, didn't, I didn't uh, realize that that's what it said. Yeah, this is this is wrong. Holy Why do you want to dress like a man? You're not a man. You're a woman. Um, you're too pretty to be a man. So all these awful statements and things that can be often um, Correlated, weaponized. Yeah. And, and, you know, and then you have this imagery of like this almost demon-like creature for the cross right and again it goes to religion is really important for a lot of brown folk uh, a, a lot of brown people and it's often sadly weaponized um, and though we have a, a movement now where spirituality and religion is being really reclaimed by a lot of queer people um, for many of us myself included when we were growing up it was used as a weapon um, a lot of a lot of in a lot of moments in our life. So yeah, this, every time I, I read this piece and I look at, you know, the words and I look at this piece, I get super, super emotional. Um, so apologies for the phone sort of shaking um, because I haven't had these exact statements used towards me, 
but I have, I've had similar statements used against me. Um, so this is, this is just one of my favorite pieces. I know I keep saying that, but they're all just so awesome. That's amazing. what I'm saying. This show's amazing. This show's so yeah. amazing. Yeah, I didn't realize that that's what this one said and that hit me in the gut a little bit there. Yeah. Wow. Um, yeah, it's, it's just... That's it's, impactful. It's stunning. So we hope that you enjoyed the show. Yeah, I'm going to do some final housekeeping. Uh, just again, thank you to our amazing artists, Anthony Barroso, Luciana McClure, Daniel Mena, Ricky Mestri, Jesus Abraham Morales Sanchez, and Juan Carlos Soto. Um, again, you can come and actually see this exhibit in person if you visit newhavenpridecenter.org and make a reservation. Again, they are completely free. Uh, if you are interested in purchasing any of these pieces, including many of the prints are for sale, uh, and you can get information from that by emailing Laura at info at newhavenpridecenter.org. I also want to invite all of you to join us for an artist talk with some of our artists from the exhibit. Uh, we will be doing that later in August. It will be called A Queer and Latinx Perspective. Uh, and finally, we would just like to thank our sponsors and supporters of our art exhibits, which include the Arts Council of Greater New Haven, the City of New Haven Department of Arts, Culture, and Tourism, and the Community Foundation for Greater New Haven. Woohoo! Woo! And again, this is the New Haven Pride Center staff giving you a virtual tour of our exhibit. Queer e gay. Yay! Thanks for watching, y'all. We hope that we can see y'all soon. But yeah. And feel free to let us know which one is your favorite. Your yeah, favorite. comment on the video, share the videos. You could even email us what your favorite is. <laughs> and we will be uploading a, a digital copy of this virtual tour to our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe at New Haven Pride Center. Have a good afternoon, everyone.